Uh, SB 13 was the talk of the town up here this past week. Thoughts? Yeah, so uh, they had a rally up here and a counter rally. Uh, talked to quite a few people who were up here passionate about life just like I am. Uh, differ on how to get there to save unborn life. Uh, but I'm still having discussions with people, seeing if we can come to some kind of conclusion that protects unborn life and doesn't uh, try to nullify the U.S. Constitution. Is SB 13 that evident? I'm sorry, what did Is you SB say? Is SB 13 that evident? I don't believe so. Uh, but we'll see. There's, there's several bills out here. There's a brainwave and heartbeat bill. There's the medical licensure bill. There's a wrongful death bill. There's a personhood bill. So we have a lot of vehicles out there. Uh, I'm absolutely committed to protecting unborn life. Uh, I, I don't believe Senate Bill 13 gets us there, but that's an ongoing discussion at the Capitol. Is an outright abolition unconstitutional? It's great having you all to myself, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is an outright abolition, is that uh, unconstitutional? Well, I don't think the outright abolition is. I think that the U.S. Supreme Court and Roe v. Wade read something into the U.S. Constitution that was not there. The part that I find unenforceable is saying that we're not going to listen to a federal court, we're not going to allow state officials go into federal court to defend the law. So I think it's, as I said, fatally flawed. I think it's well-intentioned. I share the goal of the people who are pushing Senate Bill 13, but I think they're putting false hope in that bill. What am I missing? What else happened this week? We're still right in the throes of trying to find some solutions to health care that uh, don't amend our Constitution and, and give us rigidity and uh, but give us flexibility to deliver an Oklahoma plan and we're still right in the middle of that working literally day and night. We were out uh, really late last night up here early this morning trying to work on a plan and so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have some stuff to talk about in the coming weeks about a, a real Oklahoma plan. Can you tease me a little bit in terms of what you're talking about, what you're looking at? Yeah, you know the governor uh, went to DC and talked to with the Trump administration about his plan the problem with the state question is it's not funded. So the legislature is left with trying to fund it. The other problem with the state question is that it gives the state zero flexibility to ramp up, to ramp down, to be creative, to put uh, skin in the game for people to participate. So I am hopeful that we'll find a solution in partnership with the governor to uh, have our own solution here in Oklahoma and be, a be able to find a way to pay for it uh, that is not detrimental to the rest of state government. People that are backing it, though, their, their support of it is born out of frustration because of lack of movement by the legislature. Should more have been done earlier? You know, we tried. Uh, didn't mean to spit on That's you. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, in, in 2011, 2012, we did health exchange working groups. We tried to get more innovative in the way we deliver even our own health choice product. We haven't had success uh, on that, but we have been, it's not been for lack of effort. The state question, uh, if we could pass a bill out here just saying we're accepting $900 million, but we're not going to tell you how we're going to come up with $100 million, people would laugh at us. Uh, unfortunately, the business of legislating, you actually have to pay for what you're doing. Uh, and the state question doesn't uh, require the initiative petitioners to do that. So it's, yeah, I want, I want the cake. I just don't want to pay for it. We're going to have to figure out how to pay for it. That's all I got, man. All right. Thank you. Thank you.